Hi everyone, my name is Nicole, and today's video is about how to put a western saddle on a horse. This is my pony Harvey. He is half halflinger and half pony. I'm going to put that western saddle on him. So, first of all, before I tack him, I've already done a full grooming. So, from nose to tail, down to his feet, I've groomed all of him. As I was going over him, I was rubbing my hands on him like this, and just making sure everywhere that my tack is going to go is indeed very clean. You don't want to have anything on their body that could be underneath your tack and irritating them. So typically my tack would be on this side, but the way I have, have him positioned for this video, my tack's over there. No big deal, use it as an opportunity. So the first thing I put on is the saddle pad. This is a western saddle pad. They come in different shapes, sizes, looks, but are generally rectangular like this, and sometimes they're round on the edges here. Um, before I put it on him, I'm always going to look on the inside, just give it a glance, make sure it's clean. When I go over here to put it on, if he wants to see it, that's totally fine with me. Sometimes they like to take a sniff, apparently stick their nose all the way into it. Um, and then I'm going to hold both my hands on the top like this, and I'm going to put it over his back like that. And I want the center leather brace to be in line with his mane and his spine. See that indentation right there on the pad? That's where my girth is going to go. My girth is what holds the saddle on the horse. And I want that girth about four inches behind his elbow. Which is right so that'd be about right in there. Okay? All right. Now, when I'm tacking my horses, I also forgot to mention that it's important that I have them secured in some sort of way that is safe. So for us, we're really used to being ground tied whenever we're tacked. It doesn't mean that he thinks he's tied to the ground. It just means that the rope isn't saying anything right now. And so he's to stand here. So if you see him step off one little step like that, got bored and curious, you just set that foot right back, okay? Some people tie their horses and some people cross tie their horses for tacking. None of them are wrong. You just need to know if your horse is prepared for whatever it is you're doing, so. All right, got this nifty way that I hang my saddle here. And when I put my saddle on, I'm going to stand, and again, if he wants to see it, that's fine. Some people hold under. Yes, <laughs> scratch at it. No. Some people hold under the pommel here. Some people hold here. He's a short guy, so I'm okay holding under the pommel here. Then when my right hand goes over here on the skirt. Now my left shoulder is going to get up close to him. And then I'm going to get a little bend in my knee, and it's not about how I bench press it over top of my head. It's about how I get a swing into it as I put it on his back. That way all my ratings go over to the other side. So now once I've thrown my saddle on, the first thing I do is make sure I tent up this side by holding the D-ring and push up, and then make sure the center of the saddle is in line with the center of the pad and in line with the spine. Then I come over to his right side. When I'm on his right side, I'm gonna drop all my riggings. All these straps and things hanging off the horse, or hanging off the saddle, are called the riggings. So, unbubble here, like I'm gonna pull, pull all my strings out, This is my breast collar, pull that down, and unbuckle here, untwist. Make note that I'm on the fourth hole on this side, okay? Then before I go back over to the other side, I want to see that my girth is just about to the center of his belly, but not all the way to the center. That is a mohair girth, so that is going to stretch. So I don't want it to be right in the center. If it's right in the center, it will stretch and end up too far to one side. Now I come back over here. Oh, I forgot to tent that side. Tent that side as well. This is called a latigo. This is how I keep my latigo stored. Whenever you undo this, you're just going to undo the knot here that's at the top. And then you're going to put your girth on. And you always put your girth on first because that's what is, that is what actually holds the saddle on the horse's back. You don't want to put something looser on like the breast collar first. Then say the horse were to shake or step around. And the saddle will fall to the side but still be stuck on them. That can be really frightening, could damage your saddle, and it's just not um, proper etiquette. So first, you need to put your girth on. So you reach under here, you grab your girth, you take the tail of your latigo, and you come under here, and you pull through. Now I already know, based on the size of this saddle and the size of the girth, I probably need to bring this latigo three times. So it's gone through once, it's a little distracting. It's gone through once, so now I'm gonna go through twice here. Down through that buckle. Yeah, I can get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I might not make it a third time. Okay. 
there. It's my third time. You see, I pulled up my cover there. Now I'm going to pull it until it's snug, probably till I make it to the first hole. Right about there. Okay. Now you see that big opening right there? How you close that is by grabbing the top strap of the latigo, pop it, and it'll shut. Now this belongs in the latigo keeper right there, but it can't reach there right now, so I'm just going to tuck it in the D-ring there for now. Okay. Now, the next thing I put on is my back cinch. And again, you always are tacking in this order. Now, my back cinch, I want to fit two to three fingers stacked. I'm going to come maybe where I'm at so you can see. Two to three fingers stacked here in between the belly. Okay, so I could probably fit about four fingers. So I think I'm going to go up a hole. And check again. There's about two fingers stacked, pretty snug. And you know what, that's all right for this horse. This is a really round horse, so this back cinch is gonna help the saddle stay in place. One note on the back cinch. Do not put a back cinch on that tight on a horse that is not accustomed to it. Always check out your horse to see if they've had a back cinch that tight. A lot of horses have been ridden with a back cinch, but it's hanging real low. They're not really feeling it. When it's tight like that, they're feeling it. So, and it's gonna serve its role, so, or its purpose. All right, last thing I do is I put on my breast collar. So I reach over the neck like this, grab the breast collar with my right hand. He's stepping on it, so I can ask him to take a step back. Pick up the left side here. Come up to the ring right here. That's where my breast collar goes. Got a little dirty with him on it. Come under the buckle and through. Make sure this piece is laying flat there on his chest. Okay. All right, then put the strap through the buckle. I said I was on the fourth hole on the other side. One, two, three, four. Go on the fourth hole on this side. Clip it in the center, here on his girth. Okay, and then I'm gonna reach here and put my fist in between the breast collar and his chest. You can see this is too big. So I think I'm gonna tighten that probably by about two holes. The breast collar, it's really important that if you're on the second hole on one, or on, if you're on a certain hole on one side, you need to be on the same hole on the other side. That way it's centered. Okay. Now we check. That's a lot better, a snug fist. Alright, and that's how I attack my horse. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I understand that everybody has their own way of attacking a horse. They might have a little bit of a tweak to this. Um, if you have any questions or input, please just leave a comment. Be sure you visit our website, thehandyhorseman.com, and our windyhillfarm.net website. Thanks for watching.